Food Heals Podcast, episode number two. Do they all hook up with each other? No, no one hooks up. No one hooks up. Wait, on a at, desert ever. island for three weeks and a guy and a girl are both naked. Yeah. And they nothing don't. happens. Nope. I've never seen it happen. <laughs> Off you know run. why? Because they're because they're because really of the editors <laughs> and the producer. No, because they're really hungry. Because it is really hard to find food. If you're That's not right. farming it. It's not like there's avocado. Your focus is all on <laughs> food and survival. It's true. Kind of switches. It <laughs> well, there's a craft services table that the film people are eating off of. So I don't know about all that. That is true. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Hills Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately. Welcome to the Food Heals Podcast, episode number two. Today, we're talking to Vince Leah, also known as the Healthy Vegan Guy online, and he's going to tell us about how he changed his diet and his process of overcoming ulcerative colitis. First up, Food Heals Nation, if you listened to our last episode, you may have heard our special announcement. If not, that's okay, because we're going to tell you again. We're going to tell you again. So we have a contest going on, and 10 lucky winners are going to receive an awesome prize, It is a swag bag full of our favorite health and beauty products, all organic, all vegan, all healthy. And expensive. And expensive. (laughs) Right now, the bags are worth about $300 each, and we still may be getting some more products for them, so stay tuned. So how do they enter? I'll tell you. So our (laughs) podcast is new, and we need you to help spread awareness of the podcast. So to enter the contest, all you have to do is subscribe, rate, and review. Say it with me. Subscribe, Subscribe, rate, rate, and review. review. (laughs) Yeah. So subscribe, rate, and review the podcast, and then send us a screenshot of your review, and you will be entered to win. So write nice things about us. Yeah. Maybe we'll pick you. Yeah. (laughs) We're fun. How easy is that? (laughs) It's easy. Um, So yeah, Susie and I are the judges. So we're going to pick our favorite 10 reviews and those 10 will receive in the mail swag bags from us. You can tweet us your review at Food Heals Nation. You can post it to our Facebook wall or you can email it to info at foodhealsnation.com. So today we're going to reveal one product that is in the bag. Susie? What, what are you seeing there? I just pulled out a gorgeous little bottle. No, this is a jar. This is a gorgeous little jar, gold jar of Parfait Visage. Yes. So that is a lotion. It's a face lotion, and it's really healing, you guys. It's all organic. It's non-toxic, and it's really, really nice. It's anti-wrinkle. So I put it on my forehead, cover up some of those wrinkles before I put foundation on. It's fabulous. What wrinkles? (laughs) Thank you, Susie. (laughs) Did you have wrinkles before you put this on? Because then I made them go away. I know. You don't see any. I look flawless today. (laughs) And as you guys may or may not know, I love smelling stuff, especially face and beauty products, and uh, this stuff smells good. Yeah, it smells really fresh. So it's a $60 value and we're giving it away for free in your swag bags. Today's podcast is sponsored by Schmidt's Deodorant. Schmidt's Deodorant is vegan, cruelty-free, has no harsh chemicals or toxins, and smells heavenly. I speak from experience. Allison, do you want to smell me? You do smell (laughs) heavenly. We're sitting in this hot studio, so we're all sweating because we can't turn the air on, and you smell amazing. Thank you. We know this deodorant works. (laughs) And I know Alicia Silverstone is a fan. Carol Alt loves this deodorant. It really is one of the best natural deodorants I've come across. So stay tuned because later in the podcast, we're going to tell you how you can get 20% off our favorite flavors. Today's show is also sponsored by Inside Out Mobile Spa, a luxury mobile day spa that provides elite personalized services in the comfort of your own home, office, or other desired location. And the owner, Amanda, is a friend of ours, and she actually survived cervical cancer by changing her diet and her lifestyle. So we're going to have her on the podcast in a few weeks. She's an amazing masseuse as well. So later in the show, we will tell you how you can save $20 off your first service with Amanda and Inside Out Mobile Spa. All right, next up is our interview with Vince Leah, healthy vegan guy. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. His mission is to educate and inspire others about the benefits of eating a plant-based diet and living a healthy vegan lifestyle. 
from healthyveganguy.com, we have Vince Leah. Hi. Hi, welcome. Hi, Great, thank you. thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Of course, always good to have you. And you know, we met because we were taking a class together and it was an online class and then we realized, oh, we both live in LA and we're doing <laughs> very similar things with our lives, so let's collaborate. Yeah, definitely, and it's been great. Yeah, so you're gonna have to look out. We have a bunch of videos coming up, so we will post the videos once they're up, but they're not up yet. <laughs> but maybe by the time someone is listening, they may be up. That's great. True. Yeah. All right, so Vince, I really want to hear your story in your own words from the beginning and how you came to where you are today. Yeah, no. No problem. Um, it was almost 10 years ago where I was feeling, I had a lot of stomach pain that I was experiencing and the pain was actually ramping up and it would hit to like this climax where you're just like, in a, just, I was literally keeling over in pain and then it would go back down. So it was like a sine wave and then a few minutes later I'd be fine. Mm. And then the same thing where it would ramp up again and then go back down. And I didn't know what was going on. And at first I thought, okay, it's just regular stomach pain. It'll pass, you know, give it a few days. And then I noticed like the cycles in between that were getting shorter and shorter. So it would like ramp up, back down, and then up and down. And I just literally like drove to the doctor. I left the office from work, drove to the doctors. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. He looked at me, asked me some questions. And he's like, you need to see a, a gastroenterologist, GI doctor. So I was like, okay. It was like, well, I need an appointment. I couldn't get an appointment, so I literally just drove to the emergency room because I was in so much pain. Mm. And they checked me, and I remember they were asking me questions. They're like, so do you smoke marijuana? Because a lot of people your age come in here with pain, and I'm like, no, I, I don't smoke marijuana. I'm just in a lot of stomach pain. Yeah. So they run a bunch of tests. They go, oh, we think you have kidney stones. I was like, okay. I'm like, I'm like disturbed because it's, I know that's a painful thing to have, but then again, I'm like relieved because I know what the pain is. That's, yeah, you want to have an yeah, answer. that I've been experiencing all along. And then they ran some tests like, well, it's not kidney stones. So just follow up with your doctor. And they gave me some pain pills. So I went and saw a doctor and he didn't run any tests. He just kind of listened to me and he, he was like, well, try this medication and then, then try this medication and, you know, take Beano. Maybe it's gas. And so I would I did that for like three months mm -hmm. and it would go up and down. It wasn't consistent. I still had the pain. I was still experiencing symptoms. So I told him, I said, well, why don't you just give me a colonoscopy? And he goes. You asked. You had to I, ask. I, I had for a colonoscopy for a colonoscopy because that I. That floors I, me. You know, I don't like to do like research online and tell the doctor what to do. But right. everything I'm seeing and all the symptoms I'm experiencing say the only way you really know the diagnosis yeah. is to get a colonoscopy. Get a like, good look. Yeah, he already did the endoscopy down. This didn't see anything, and so did the colonoscopy. And I go see him, you know, a week later, and he goes, "Well, the colon, the you know, we did some biopsies." and you have ulcerative colitis. And I was like, I didn't, that's the first time I've ever heard that word. I didn't know what ulcerative colitis was. And I was like, okay, well, where do I go from here? I go, would you have known that without a, without a colonoscopy? He goes, well, no. Ugh. I was like, okay, so where do we go from here? Yeah. So eventually I left him and went to another doctor. Good for you, always get another opinion. <laughs> exactly. Find someone that you trust. <laughs> so, you know, when we went down the normal, because most doctors, you know, they're like, okay, try this medication, find ones that works. And th the strange thing that the second doctor told me was that he's like, well, you know, you're always going to have, and one of the, the side effects from, from colitis, off getting too descriptive, is you have a lot of blood. Okay. You, you, and so he goes, well, you're, you're always going to have blood. You're, that's never going to go away. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, this, it doesn't sound right. Like, your body is not healing with the medication you're giving me, so why should I continue to? It's like it's like having a cut on your arm. It's never going to scab up. It's just going to keep bleeding. It didn't make sense to me. Didn't seem like it was treating the cause. Exactly, and so I started thinking. I'm like, well, food has to be tied into this somehow. You know, I think stress is. You know, there's environmental factors. Sure. As well, um, and so I. I went to go see like, so I actually changed doctors, went to a third doctor and the same doctor I still go in and do checkups with. But I wanted to see, okay, like what diets are there for, for this condition? And one of the diets I found, it's called the specific carb diet. And it's, it's actually in my eyes more strict than like a vegan diet that I'm on now. You can't have any carbohydrates, no rice, no potatoes. You could have some vegetables. Um, but there are the good parts about that diet, like you get rid of all processed foods. That's so good. that was the first diet that removed processed foods from my diet. Mm -hmm. 
So I was on that, and I stuck on that for about two years. And I got a little better, but I still had complications. Mm -hmm. So I was like, there has to be something, there's something else. When, when you're first diagnosed, before I found this diet, you're told everybody reacts differently. So have lots of rice, have some potatoes, have meat, don't eat any vegetables. Because raw vegetables and raw fruit, that'll, no, that's not good when you have colitis. Who told you this? Wow. Every doctor I know. There are, I mean, I have friends right now that are amazed. Like, I'll post a picture of a salad, and they're yeah. like, how are you eating raw kale? I'm like, it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but because the doctors and, and everything we, we're trained and we're told is you have to stay away from those foods. Totally, your totally body's skewed to think that that's really hard to digest when, in fact, it has all the enzymes it needs to be digested, right? It is, yeah. exactly, because it's like, oh, your body is very difficult to digest. You can't digest those foods. And I remember, like, the first time I had a green juice. Mm -hmm. Like, that was, like, the first thing for me going into a, a vegetable after years of not wow. having And meat is so raw. hard to digest. Exactly. I mean that's like counterintuitive to me. But, how, really but you know when you when you then I'm finding out how many how many days do doctors have of nutrition? You know like when ten they, hours. Yeah, it's study. it's very little. Yeah. Even in Planned Pure Nation, that doctor said she had none. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it's very scary. And so like I remember having my first green juice. I'm like, oh my gosh, like what's gonna happen when I have these vegetables? Like, wow, well, <laughs> my body's gonna react. I'm scared of the green juice. I am. I was like, oh my. No! It's but a I, monster! I was like, okay, I'm going to try. So there was a juice bar like down the house. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go there every morning and get a green juice. And they literally, like, I would call them. They knew my name. They knew what I wanted. I wanted kale, spinach, apple, ginger, blah, 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 blah celery, blah, make it. I'd pick it up and I'd leave. Cool. And after a few weeks, I was like, wow. Like, my body's not reacting. I was, I was like, the first few days, I was just at home because I was waiting. Well, I was expecting, like, you know, the aftermath yeah. from all this green juice. And I was like, man, I wonder if I could have a salad. Ooh, salad, right? <laughs> Dare so to dream. Yeah. So I, mean, I hadn't had a salad in years. Wow. And had the salad, and it tasted, it tasted great. I didn't have any side effects from this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this whole thing started because I was, I was at a party. And I met someone th who had colitis or I think he had colitis or Crohn's. I can't remember. But he actually used a vegan diet and he healed himself. I was like, okay, maybe there's something to this, this vegan diet. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> so that kind of started me with the, the green juice and then the vegetables. And then, then it just kind of took off from there and created this life of its own. Then I was like, you know, what am I going to eat? Because first I was all like eating just, you know, salads. And then you start finding out, okay, you actually make this and you can make this. And then you start getting creative in the kitchen and then it just kind of... Yeah, and you are very, very creative <laughs> in the kitchen. You guys have to see his Instagram posts. They look like professionally <laughs> made by a chef. They are professional photos. They are mouth-watering. They look so good. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, I love to eat and I love to cook and I love to kind of get creative in the kitchen. And... You know, what, you know, what's amazing is there's so many great people out there creating content. Yeah. And I mean, I love to cook and I love to, to do that kind of stuff. And originally, that's kind of what I was focused everything on was I'm going to just do all these recipes. And then the, the deeper I got into it and the more people I talked to, I was like, wow, look at all these other people making this delicious food. And that's what I love about this whole, this whole, like, I don't want to call it industry, but movement, the whole movement is that nobody really competes against each other. No. It's not like I'm a chef and you're a chef and you're, you're going to take my people. Because, you know, coming from the corporate America world, mm -hmm. it's, it's just... Competition. It's, yeah, it's doggy dog. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to beat you and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. Where now it's like, let's help each other. Let's, awesome. let's collaborate on something. And it's such a welcoming environment, especially coming from, yeah. you know, the, the corporate America world. And I, and I started, now I want to be like, I want to expose people to all these other great chefs that are you know creating this food healing people the you know some of this raw food when yeah. you go into these restaurants it's like artwork amazing yeah i'm just i went to the springs yesterday for lunch mm. and i hadn't been there for lunch before and this great new I mean, mostly raw food mm -hmm. downtown la and i i took a friend i, I love taking non-vegan friends to a vegan restaurant <laughs> like it is like the best reaction where they're like 
whoa i didn't i didn't i i can't what believe I this is vegan <laughs> yeah like we had some spicy tuna rolls and they used some like pate in there and it like it tasted like a regular sushi roll like it was incredible i was i was with a friend and we were driving around it was around lunchtime and i was like let's go get some pulled pork and he looked at me and he goes you don't eat pork i was like oh no because there's there's a place in la called organics and they have this insane jackfruit pulled pork mm. sandwich and so he looks at me and he gives me this look of like really like you're gonna give me jackfruit and you think <laughs> i'm gonna like this thing he goes i love meat and i'm like that's fine let's just go look i'll buy no problem if you don't like it you know you can go across the street to tommy's if you want it yeah. tommy's burger and so we got some pulled pork and he was he was floored like i've taken three people to that place since and oh, wow they're all meat eaters I get I get the reaction I posted on my YouTube channel. It's it's just great because they're just like, wow. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I've seen their reactions and it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they can't believe it. Like they have this thing called the Big Mac and it tastes like a Big Mac. You're kidding me. Where is this? It's in <laughs> it's in Eagle Rock. It's called Organics. Organics. Okay. They have it's a shop where you could buy food. They have like you know different cheeses and and you know cereals and desserts and stuff. But then they have this little deli window. Like, Pre- prepared stuff yeah well no they make it there like yeah. they'll literally marinate the jackfruit and it's all made to order so it's usually like i'll call it in on my way there because it's like 20 minutes to get you there. like to do that i do <laughs> you know you gotta have that relationship with these people you he know? tortures his friends on a daily basis <laughs> <laughs> like oh it's vince again he's bringing these non-vegans in here <laughs> <laughs> but obviously they keep going back so you're doing something right well, the food they're doing something right i mean it's, a, it's not a, it's not difficult to sell them on food when it tastes delicious yeah so. And they have really good cheese, as you were saying, because I know the one thing that people tell me, even if they're vegetarian or if they're a meat eater, they'll say, well, I could never give up cheese. Mm-hmm. I hear that all the time. Yeah. And I mean, and I tell people, look, look, I'm Italian. Yeah. Like, if you don't think it was difficult for me yeah. to give up cheese, but I think last year it was like the boom of vegan cheeses mm-hmm. because there's so many options now where... You could go to Follow Your Heart and get provolone. You can get Miyoko's cheese. Mm-hmm. There's a shop here called Romage where you can. It, it, it's amazing. Like you will, you can't tell. Kite Hill just came out with a ricotta cheese. Yeah. That like I'm almost addicted to that. And they're all made from like nuts and seeds. Right? Yeah. It's it's and that's what I always look at the ingredients because the last thing I want to do is have heavily processed foods. Um, and I'll look at the back and it's like four ingredients. Mm-hmm. I went to a class at Spork Foods. Uh, which is like a local class here. It's two sisters, and they they'll literally have a class of maybe I don't know ten to ten to fifteen people, and they literally teach you how to make different different meals, and they give you the recipes, and then you make the food, and then you all sit around a big table and eat it family style, and then you take on the recipes. That's and we awesome. made these. Th- I forget what they want. It was a Mexican dish, but it had like mushrooms with walnuts, and it created definitely a meat flavor. And so I made that, and we put them on the barbecue. And we had oh, maybe 10 people over. And we and I started serving them. They go, oh, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's just shredded beef. <laughs> and I started serving it to people. And then I took the last one and I ate it. And then one of the guys looks at me and he's like, why are you eating that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what am I eating? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, surprise. So surprise. <laughs> and Food Heals Nation, we're not trying to trick anyone or tell you you have to trick your friends. We're just saying that there is a healthy way to eat and it can taste just as good and you don't have to feel as bad after you eat it. That's our whole yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, you, I do not miss that bloated feeling after having a piece of meat. Yeah. You know, you, you still feel light. I mean, Granted, you could eat some vegan food and still feel pretty bloated, yeah. but you know, for the most part, if you're eating clean, you know, enjoy it and you just, you just feel great. So how are you feeling now? You're doing a lot better. How long ago was it that you were diagnosed and that you adopted this diet? And it has, how long has it been since you have been feeling better? I was diagnosed about 10 years ago with colitis. I've been vegan for probably almost two years now. Mm-hmm. And before that, the last thing I gave up was fish. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd given everything up and I think I was eating fish for probably a year before that, but fully vegan for about two years. And once I started giving up the meat and the cheese and it wasn't difficult because I already given up processed foods. So, and then I, I was kind of on that other diet I was on, I was restricted on how much cheese I could have. The only thing I could really have was cheddar. 
Mm. Uh, you, or I think maybe Monterey, but you couldn't have mozzarella. You couldn't have ricotta cheese. So I, I was used to already giving that up. So for me, I just had to give up a little bit of cheese, which wasn't a big deal. Um, and so fully vegan for about two years. And I noticed like the improvement started. Like I was like, my symptoms started going down mm -hmm. and down and down. And I've been working with my doctor um, just to go over like, you know, I was actually on the way to go start like a biological medication. Um, and when, before they put you on all the, the any biological medication, you'll see the commercials, you know, you know, you are you know, susceptible to blah, 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 blah. And don't I travel to a country where this disease is known. Mm -hmm. That's blah, when blah, you blah. can get like TB or exactly. horrible. So I had to go through all those tests and they found something on my lung where I was on the way there. I get a call from the doctor. She goes, do not take the first it was Remicade that I was going to be taking she goes don't take the Remicade mm. and I was like and oh. you're about to go and, and get I was it? literally driving for my first round wow and I had just found out about this whole vegan diet thing yeah and I was like what's going on she goes well there's something on your lung we just need to find out if it's active or if it's not because if it's active we can't put you on Remicade because all these biological medications suppress your immune system oh my gosh so I was like okay so they had to run a bunch of tests so meanwhile, while they're running all these tests, I start adopting the vegan diet. And then by the time they found out, the thing on my lung was no big deal. Mm -hmm. They said, look, it, it's an old one that just healed. And when it heals, it leaves a mark. Everybody has them. You probably had an infection. Maybe you didn't even know it, mm -hmm. but you're fine. So I told my doctor, I said, look, I, I don't want to go on these medications. I said, I'm feeling better. And she's like, okay, Good well, we'll, uh, we'll keep monitoring you. And so I, ha I remember having my, I had a colonoscopy later that year, or the next year, and I hadn't gotten worse. Because every year I'd go in for colonoscopy, it's be worse and worse and mm. worse. So this is the first time where it's like, okay, it's kind of stabilized, so keep doing what you're doing. So I was able to stay off of the, the biological medication. And so the next year I went in for colonoscopy, and it actually showed improvement from the previous year. Whoa. Now at that time I was still eating fish, but I would... Everything else was, was gone. What did your doctor say when there was improvement? Um, yeah, it's, it's funny. They're, they're just kind of like, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Right. You know, I mean, if, if, it, if the diet's working for you, you know, keep doing it. And then I had a last, my last colonoscopy, which was last year, still, still showed a little more improvement. So it's going in the right direction. Now, I'm still on some medications. And I'm, you know, eventually I want to get off of those. But I'm working with her to do it in a smart way. Yeah. You know, because I don't think it's good just to drop your medications. It's absolutely not. Because, you know, yeah, you're, you're yeah. going to have consequences from yeah. that. So I'm, I'm working with her to, to get to a point where I feel comfortable saying, okay, let's start tapering these off. And, th and that's my end goal. So, I'm, I mean, I don't hide the fact that I'm, I'm still on these. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want people to think, oh, I'm healed. I don't take anything. Uh, I definitely feel like my body has healed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm still being careful as I go. Well, you're in the healing process and you've made so much progress. If you were out of the pain that you were in before, that's what's important. So I'm so excited for you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, the, the pain was, the pain gets pretty crazy at times. Yeah, and I feel like most people that go in this direction kind of have the same experience. It's like you go pescatarian where you're still eating seafood and then you go vegetarian and then you go vegan and then some people come back and some people don't and some people go raw and it's just finding that perfect balance of what works for you yeah it sounds like that's what you found oh definitely then then once you start you know then once i said okay i'm vegan then it's like okay plant-based versus vegan and then i just started embracing the whole lifestyle mm -hmm. and that's kind of what i've been focusing when i talk to people is just like you know I don't think I could actually I shouldn't say I don't think I don't, I don't think I'll ever go back mm -hmm. to eating meat and, and cheeses again I, I've seen too much yeah. you know you start learning information the about other side. it yeah it's like yeah uh, yeah it's well not besides the health alone my, I learned about the health part first and then I learned about the treatment of the animals and that's when I was like I will never go back <laughs> I didn't think I'd be affected as much yeah but like I remember just driving when I, we drove to, to VVC, Vita VeganCon, yes. and we're driving through Texas, and you just see, like, these, this, you know, farms of cows. Yeah. And, and I, it, it hits me, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, wow. Like, I never thought I would be affected as much as I am yeah. when, I, when I see what's going on, and you know what's like going on behind. Like, emotionally, you get emotionally affected. Yeah. I mean, you, know, you just think about it. It's like, wow. Like, you know what that process is now. 
like when I was a kid, I was like, oh, you know, cows. Ooh. Yeah. But now you're thinking, wow, like the life that that cow has yep. compared to the life that it was intended to have. Mm-hmm. Right. So it, it, it does affect you. And I think yeah. that's where, you know, creating the website and moving toward just recipes where just educating people and promoting other people that are doing great things. Like, I want to be like a resource for people. Check this person out. Check this person out. You know, check out your podcast. Absolutely. You know, I mean, look at it. Look what's going on here. You know, there's so many great people, like I said, just doing amazing work. And I think people need to be aware of that. No, and I feel the same way as what you were saying earlier, where it's not a competition. Everyone that's in this type of industry just wants to help each other. And I felt that way because Vince and I were both at this conference called Vita Vegan Con together. And everyone was there to collaborate and help each other and meet each other. And it was such a positive energy event and it was like it wasn't a typical business thing where it's everyone out for themselves everyone has to race to the top it was like oh let's collaborate i can help you do this you can help me do this like i'll help you film and you'll help me you know make a recipe Mm -hmm. it was amazing and that's you know it just shows the power of the movement that is currently happening in this food world and because everybody feels really good yeah. Well, it's just no, I mean, it's kind of like, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then they want to feel good. Yeah. yeah, then there's just so many people out there that I think once people get educated about it and get exposed to it, it's not a, it's not a hard, I don't want to say sell, but it's not hard to educate somebody about it. And they're going to make that decision on their own. And more often than not, they're probably going to go for it because once they find out about how things go and and the process and the biggest question is where do you get your protein oh yeah you know, how do you get your protein you know all of my buddies they lift weights are like i don't get it i'm like <laughs> well right. let's find out how, yeah. where, Vince, where do you get your protein <laughs> everywhere <laughs> you know you can get it from from nuts from soy from plants i mean i even started to and i was always against like protein supplements mm-hmm. like i was like you know you look at the back of the ingredients there's like 50 ingredients you know yeah uh, i just started taking sunwire you know, you look in the back, it's like four ingredients. Not much. Yeah. A couple, couple other things. But, and I feel great, you know. I think the problem is, is with supplements, people say, well, they're not regulated, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> because there are good companies out there that are putting great quality ingredients in. Like, for example, you said Sun Warrior. Mm-hmm. I use Sun Warrior. I use Vitaforce. Those two companies are the highest quality you can get. And then there's all these other companies that are just like, I want to be in the supplement business. I can make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And they're putting crap preservatives in their products. You really have to educate yourself. Yeah. You can't just buy any protein powder, any green powder on the market. You really have to know someone or do your research. Call up the company. What do they put in there? Read your ingredients and Google them. What does this actually mean? Mm-hmm. You know? Well, that's why I, I had to change my, my, my view on them. Because originally I was like, well, I'm, never, I'm not taking any protein. Like every time I would, I'd have pain. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't agree with me. I, I'd feel bloated halfway through the day. And I was talking to a friend who was talking to me about Sunwire. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm going to be open-minded. So I went on their website, looked at the ingredients, looked at the product, went to the store, and said, okay, I'm going to try this. And it, I feel great. That's so, great. That's fantastic. You know, I think you have to be open-minded, too. when You, you can't close your eyes. like, I'm never going to take that. Did you ever consider just going raw? Yes. Okay. Um, it's funny because I did a, a juice cleanse. I shouldn't say a juice cleanse because it was juices and smoothies. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did that a few a couple months ago, and I felt great. Like, I felt so focused. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like, like everything was coming. Like, I was just, like, on it. You felt cleansed. I, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> my, but in my mind, like, I felt, like, real cl- like clear. Yeah. What, what I was thinking and my actions, it was like boom, boom, boom. That was my experience yeah. with Raw First. I did a like a like a company that delivered to your door. Nice. You delivered your lunches and your dinners. You made your breakfast. I did it for a week, did it as a cleanse. I was like, oh, maybe I'll lose some weight. I felt amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I was, and I had no idea. I had never tried raw food before. And I was like, I don't know, but we'll see. Um, I felt amazing. I mean, the amount of energy and the amount of food that I wasn't really eating because it's so nutrient dense. Mm-hmm. You have to chew it really well. Yes. Because it's not cooked. Um, but I, I had so much energy. But then at the same time, I started, I went on a date with a raw foodist and we went to a restaurant. <laughs> and it was really good. Like, I, I loved the dessert at, at, in the beginning. Like, the t- they, you know, they say you're going to have your dessert, you eat it first mm-hmm. in raw food. Yes. Yeah. Was <laughs> it Love Planet that. Raw? Juliano's Planet Raw? <laughs> it was down in Santa Monica. I don't remember. Yes, that was yeah. it. Okay. They say eat dessert first. Yes. That's the whole That's philosophy. Where it was. That's the, where it was. The dessert is at the front of the menu. And he's like, well, if you're going to get dessert, you need to order it now. And you're like, what? No, that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so, but I couldn't, like, couldn't ever see doing it strictly that way. And this guy was strictly raw. And I was like, I don't think this is going to work out. But <laughs> I've learned about raw food. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire. And you're listening to the Food Heals podcast, where you'll find the tools to become a hotter, healthier, happier you. We'll be right back with Allison Melody and Susie Hardy. Are you feeling unbalanced, stressed out, or suffering from body pain? We can help. Inside Out Mobile Spa is a luxury mobile day spa that provides elite personalized service in the comfort of your own home, office, or other desired location. Concentrating on a holistic and therapeutic approach, we help to create relaxation, balance, and wellness. Our services include massage therapy, gourmet raw food classes, doula services, kundalini yoga classes, pilates, acupuncture, and spa parties. We bring all of the necessary equipment to create a private mini oasis in your preferred space. Our expert technicians will pamper you while you unwind with our customized signature treatments. We are offering an exclusive discount to Food Heals listeners. For a limited time, if you book any service using the coupon code FOODHEALS, you will receive $20 towards your first service. And if you refer three friends, you will receive 60 extra minutes at your next appointment. Go to www.insideoutmobilespa.com and book today. Food Heals Nation, if you are like me, you know that good deodorant is hard to find. We all want to be natural and chemical free, but smell good too. We've all been in that situation where you tried the natural stuff and then suddenly you're on a date or on the dance floor and you realize something smells and it's you. (laughs) You give up on the natural stuff to go back to the drugstore toxic stuff because at least it smells good. That's why I was so happy to find Schmidt's deodorant. Schmidt's sources only the highest quality ingredients for their award-winning formula that is vegan, cruelty-free, and free of toxic chemicals. Schmidt's mission is to change the way people think about deodorant, and I love the fact that their products are affordable and long-lasting. That's why I teamed up with Jamie at Schmidt's Deodorant to bring you a discount exclusive to Food Heals listeners. Go to their website schmitzdeodorant.com and use the discount code foodheals all one word during checkout for 20% off your purchase my favorite scent is the bergamot and lime it is luscious try it out today check them out at schmitzdeodorant.com you are listening to the food hills podcast make sure to subscribe rate and review us on itunes there's a show called Naked and Afraid, and there's a bunch of a bunch of these shows now that are all about survive, put people yeah. in the middle of nowhere, and yeah. see what happens. Bear Grylls. Yeah, Naked and Afraid is really entertaining. It's a, a guy and a girl never met before. They bring them to really harsh. Some are worse than others, but areas of the planet, oh. like areas in Tanzania and the Costa Rican rainforest, and like wow. you know, islands off of Fiji, and just just out in the middle of nowhere. You have to strip all your clothes. <laughs> And you can bring, I think, one tool. This is terrible. No, but it's really, (laughs) but it's these people that do this, the ones that survive, it's for three weeks, are amazing. Do they all hook up with each other? No, no one hooks up. No one hooks up. Wait, on a desert island for three weeks and a guy and a girl are both naked. Yeah. And And nothing happens. Nope. I've never seen it happen. (laughs) You know why? Because they're because they're Cause really the editors <laughs> and the producer. No, because they're really hungry. Because it is really hard to find food. If you're yeah, not right. farming it. It's not like there's avocado. Your focus is all on <laughs> food and survival. It's true. Kind of switches. It <laughs> well, there's a craft services table that the film people are eating off of. So I don't know about all that. That is true. <laughs> but these people have to find their water. They have to find like they have to boil it. A lot of them get sick off of the water. There's no like, if, and they know stuff. Like they're they're you know they're eating bugs and they're eating certain plants and they're then yeah, it's amazing. It's really it's really entertaining. It's actually very educational. It makes me realize how much I would fail at that task. <laughs> I think a lot of us would fail at that yeah. task. Yeah. I would never put myself in that situation. That sounds terrible. Food Hills Nation is a judgment free judgment free zone. All right, so events. If someone is trying to start a new diet and go plant-based, maybe not necessarily all the way vegan, but what tips would you give them to move to a plant-based diet? I would say the biggest thing is progress over perfection. And I think a lot of people, when they they start this thing, they say, like, I'm going to go, like, full bore all the way. And they then it's like they have one piece of cheese or they have a hamburger or a steak or something and they just go off the wagon and they, 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 they say I can't do that 
because they're not they're not doing it in baby steps. Like just do one meal, do like one plant based meal a day, and and slowly progress to where you want to go. And I think a lot of people there's you know you always hear like the vegan police, you know, and I think people criticize people that aren't all the way. But it's like everybody started on their journey somewhere, and most of us had meat at one time. Like yeah. there are a few people I know that were that were raised vegan. I don't know anyone. Yeah, I know. A few, I've met a few. That's amazing. But it, it's the few and far between. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, I don't. I don't think we need to be hard on people. We just need to say, you know, just go slowly. Just say, okay, you know what? I'm going to get rid of of meat, or I'm going to try to go, you know, meatless Monday or whatever, mm-hmm. and just slowly progress to it. And don't kill yourself if, oh my gosh, I had a piece of cheese or I, I had a piece of meat and I, I can't I can't do this anymore. And I think that's what a lot of people face. Right. So I would de- say definitely just go slowly um, and then just have have some good food. Like I like going to like restaurants, look at the ingredients and be like, OK, I can make this mm-hmm. and then make something similar to that at home, you know, because you just play around with it and just have fun. Yeah. Like have fun with it. I think people take it very seriously. And it, I understand why. I mean, it is a serious topic and there's a lot of things going on. But I think you want to have fun with it. Enjoy it go out to eat ex- experiment in the kitchen but you know just i think progress over perfection is huge i think that's such a beautiful sentiment progress over perfection because i know when i started this whole journey of starting to get healthy i went for perfection and mm-hmm. i had to reel myself in because the perfectionism was not healthy mm-hmm. right so it's like i'm eating all the right things but i'm judging myself and i'm angry if i'm not doing it right and i had to let all that go and kind of come back to the middle and go all right you don't have to be perfect at what you're trying Mm -hmm. to do you just have to do enough that you're comfortable you're happy and you're feeling better Mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about and Mm -hmm. I didn't have any type of disease to make me do that I just had a complete fear that because both of my parents died of cancer when I was still in my 20s that oh my god I'm gonna get cancer because it runs in the family which isn't necessarily true because it's all about prevention (laughs) and they say something like there's a small percent that comes from genes there's a small percent that comes from something else and 75 percent is what you're doing on a daily basis well the the mental portion of that yeah you know I mean I, I think going back to colitis like I think that that condition I think plays with your mental and emotional aspect as just as much as the, the, the pain and the, the physical part of it too. Of course. Because mentally, it's like, I remember it's like, I can't go out. I can't go for a walk. I can't go play basketball. I can't do this because I was afraid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, I remember like, you know, I went on a road trip last month where we drove to Texas and it took us two days to get there. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember just sitting there and I, I told the guys I was with, I was like, you know, this is I'm going back. I would. I was afraid to drive over an hour in the car with people. Wow. Because I had to go to the bathroom all the time. Yeah. So, and I think a lot of that's mental. Just getting over that yeah. mental block of you can do this. Same thing with the cancer. You know, it's like both well, my parents have it. So you're, you know, immediately right. your brain starts, you know, populating ideas and you know stress and everything. And I think just letting some of that go. And getting over that hurdle is huge. And that worry creates more stress, which then yeah. feeds the condition, which creates more worry. It's exactly. like yeah. it's a cycle. And perception is reality. If you think, like, I can't go on this road trip, then you're right. You can't. Mm-hmm. If I think I'm going to get cancer, I probably am. So I have to think 100% that I'm not. <laughs> 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 and eat right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, Vince. Well, thank you so much for being here. And can you tell everyone where they can find you? First of all, thanks for having me. Um, you can find me at healthyveganguy.com. Also on my YouTube channel under Healthy Vegan Guy, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook. It's all under Healthy Vegan Guy. So whatever social media you're on, type in Healthy Vegan Guy and you'll find me. And are you on the new things like Snapchat and Periscope? Yes, I'm on both Snapchat, Periscope. Uh, those are the two new ones that just kind of rolled out that I'm on as well. You know I knew the answer to that, and that's I why know, I asked I you. <laughs> you see all the snaps going on. <laughs> yes, we do watch each other's snaps. <laughs> it's really fun. I usually know what Vince has eaten in a day, and he knows what I've eaten in a day. Because we sit there and we take pictures of our food. That's and a if, special relationship. It really it is. is. If we go out to dinner, it's so funny because we sit there and take pictures of the food for 15 minutes. And the waitress are like, do you want me to bring your meals? Or are you still taking pictures of the appetizers? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Don't eat that. Yeah. People get crazy. They're like, can I eat them? Like, no, not yet. I got to get the picture. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here. And we'll see you guys next time, Food Heals Nation, on thanks, the Food Heals Podcast. Thank thanks you.
All right, that's our show. Thanks for listening. What a great interview. Vince is such a great guy. That was such a great interview. Yeah. He made it really easy. He does make it really easy. He has good tips, and he's just a perfect example of someone who's, you know, gone full circle. And he's doing, he's living the Food Heals kind of Monica. manifesto. <laughs> if you can live a manifesto, but he's doing exactly what we're talking about. He's yeah. proof positive that someone can take control of their own health. It's a perfect example. And, you know, I know that it takes time to heal, but he's he has healed himself and he's still healing. Yeah. That's an ongoing process. Yeah. It's a, a well, a that, go, it's a that goes to our tweetable because I know when I asked him what his advice would be to someone who's thinking about eating more of a plant based diet, he said, think progress over perfection. Do one plant based meal a day and slowly progress to where you want to go. That's perfect. That's per- That's what I'm trying to do right now, actually, yeah. because. As I have admitted, I'm not a vegetarian. But, you know, my husband actually said to me today, he actually said, without me even prompting him, this was amazing, this really happened, he actually said, I want to move towards vegetarianism. I want to eat more plants. We had some steak last night, and he woke up and he said, I don't feel so good. Yeah. So that is perfect. I mean, that's what we have to do. Yeah, it's progress over perfection. Do little things at a time, and you're going to start feeling better. That's it. Absolutely. So if you like his tweet, tweet it back to us at Food Heals Nation and tweet it to Vince at Healthy Vegan Guy. Again, the tweetable is think progress over perfection. Do one plant-based meal a day and slowly progress to where you want to go. And don't forget to follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Food Heals Nation. Next week, we're getting deep with us, Allison and Susie. Yeah. Yeah. You will hear our personal stories and why we decided to do this podcast. So that's it for this episode of the Food Heals Podcast. See you next week. And remember, Food Heals Nation, disease is opportunity, an opportunity to change your life. Once you can view it that way, you can empower yourself to make the changes necessary to heal. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. 